Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Parallel C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about MPI collective communication routines. So in the last video, we looked at the basics of writing parallel programs with MPI. So we saw how we could query basic information, like the number of uh, processes that we're running. And we also saw the basics of point-to-point -point communication with MPI send and receive. Now, oftentimes inside of our programs, um, we want to do things like distribute work to our different processes or collect back partial results. Now, well, we could of course implement this with you know these basic point-to-point -point, uh, communication you know styles with MPI send and receive. Uh, fortunately, MPI provides a number of collective communication routines to do things like broadcast piece of data, scatter piece of data, gather them back, and even perform operations like you know reduction. So what we're going to be looking at is the basics of how we can use these to implement uh, you know, some simple work like a sum reduction. So on the right-hand side of the screen, I have the Lawrence Livermore National Lab tutorial for MPI up. I'll make sure to link this below the video. And you can see some basic diagrams of the kinds of uh, collective communication routines that um, you know, we have available to us. So we have things like broadcast if we want to send the same piece of data to multiple different processes, scatter for when we want to you know, partition our data and send you know, a unique chunk to our different you know, tasks or processes. Then we have you know, things like gather routines for collecting results back and even things like reduction for both collecting results and performing some sort of operation. So what we're going to be doing today is looking at the basics of how we can implement some reduction. So, you know, say we have a large um, vector or array of integers. Um, and what we want to do is, uh, you know, take the sum of all the elements inside of that array. Now, one of the ways that we can do this is by distributing our array to different processes, having those processes uh, you know, just sum a chunk of that array. And then we can finally combine all of those partial results into a final sum. So let's see how we can implement that in MPI. So we'll go ahead and open up this zero sum reduction. And you can see our, our program starts off like all of our other MPI programs uh, that we looked at last time. So of course, we're going to be including MPI.h here, this header file for MPI. And we're starting uh, with this MPI init, right, uh, to initialize, you know, our, our MPI section of our code. Now within the MPI section of our code, right, we start by getting the total number of tasks we have. The total number of tasks or ranks is going to determine, you know, how much data we send to um, each process. Now, in this case, we're just assuming that um, uh, our num tasks divides our total num elements uh, evenly. So in this case, we have, you know, not terribly large sized array here. So it's just two to the 10 total elements here. And we're dividing that up across all of our tasks evenly. Uh, and that gives us this chunk size. So then from there, we use MPI com rank to get a, our task ID, so um, our unique identifier within our communicator. And we're just using this MPI com world again, this kind of default communicator. Now to send our data, right, we're going to be sending it from, um, you know, just this uh, unique pointer that we have right here. So this is going to contain our main array that we're going to distribute across all of our different processes and then collect back those final results. So here, right, we'll have a std unique pointer that contains uh, or manages an allocation for an array of integers here. And our task zero or rank zero is going to be the one that generates our random data. So what our task zero will do is call std make unique for num elements. So it creates and does this dynamic allocation for integer array. Then we create a random number generator. And in this case, uh, we'll just leave it, um, you know, this uniform int distribution as, you know, you know, values between one and one. So it's just gonna be an array of ones here. And then we'll change it up a bit later, but just for a functionality test, we'll leave it with just setting our array to all ones. And then we'll have our std generate, which actually makes the call to this uh, distribution to generate our random numbers and fill our uh, array with those numbers. Okay, so that's going to be our setup here, right? So only rank zero here is going to create this uh, input array, right, for some reduction. All of our other ranks will just receive a chunk of this array. Okay, so for all of our other uh, ranks, right, including rank zero here, everyone's going to e uh, execute this same code here. So every single one of our other ranks is going to create a receive buffer. So where they're going to receive um, their chunk of this array from. So we'll just call std make uh, unique again for an array of integers, uh, except this time we only need chunk size, right? Each uh, process is just getting a chunk of the array. So only our, um, only our rank zero actually has to do this 
uh, allocation for our send pointer, right? Because rank zero is the only one that's going to be sending the data here. Everyone else is just going to be receiving the data. So it's going to be okay if everyone else just has a unique pointer um, that's really just a null pointer underneath the hood. So then we get to the actual process of doing a scatter here, right? So that's this, op this operation on the upper right-hand corner here of these collective communication routines. And we can even you know, go down here and we see that this MPI scatter is a data movement operation that distributes distinct messages from a single source task to each task in the group. So we're just sending a chunk of our um, array to each of our different tasks or ranks inside of our MPI com world communicator. So you can see here um, the, the general format of you know, how we're sending this data. So to each process, we're going to send chunk size elements of MPI ints, right, that are all coming from this send pointer here, that unique pointer um, that we have. And then for every other process, they are going to receive chunk size elements of MPI ints, and those are going to go into our receive buffer, right? That's the thing we just allocated right here. Now our root for our scatter, so that's where our data is actually going to be coming from, is going to be rank zero in this case from MPI com world, this communicator. So rank zero or task ID zero is going to be our root. So this is where, uh, this is what the source of this data for MPI scatter is going to be uh, coming from. Um, so rank zero is the only one where the sin pointer actually matters, right? For everyone else, it can basically just be a null pointer, but for rank zero, that's where our data is actually coming from. And then everyone else is just going to be receiving data into this uh, receive buffer. Now rank zero will also receive right, a chunk of this data. It will also receive chunk type elements in its receive bu buffer, but rank zero will be the only one um, that's actually sending the data. So if we go ahead and take a look at the parameter names right for this MPI scatter, you can see that right we have a uh, location of a buffer we're sending from, how many elements we're sending, the send count, and the type of those elements, which is MPI int in this case. And then we have the exact same thing for a receive buffer. So a pointer to our receive buffer, um, the number of elements we have in our receive buffer or we're going to receive, and also the type, so MPI int again and this root and communicator. So where are we actually sending the data from, the source of this data for this scatter, uh, which rank that is, and in which communicator. So just our MPI com world again. Okay, so that's going to be our distribution of this data. So we're going to spread out our array across all of our different processes, including the sending process, including rank zero. So from there, what we have after that, we're going to do our local uh, computations here. So every single process is going to get a chunk of that array. So we're just going to reduce that locally. So by just calling std reduce for on our receive buffer here. So we're just going to add up the contents of that receive buffer into local result. So after each process does this, we're going to collect a global result here, right, for our um, rank zero again. So here for that, we're gonna use MPI reduce. So again, if we look at this um, LNL tutorial and the diagram on the you know, lower right of these four, four pictures, this is the basic operation we're doing. Every single process has a partial result and we want to add all that partial results and get a final answer. And this final answer will be in our rank zero, whatever we specify to be our root. Now, if we wanted this answer to go to any of our processes, or rather all of our processes, we could use an all reduce method, right? That would distribute the final result to everyone. Uh, but in this case, we just want the result to be in rank zero or whatever we specify as our root. Okay, so let's go ahead and see, you know, what the overall format of this MPI reduce call is. So, right, we're going to be sending from this local result here. So we'll provide, um, right, an address of this local result. And then what we're going to be uh, uh, accumulating into is this global result here. So if we go ahead and take a look on the right, we see we have a send buff and a receive buff as our first two parameters. So we're sending from this local result here and we're collecting inside of this global result. Then the amount of data that we're gonna be collecting is just going to be a single integer here, right? This local result from this std reduce call that we have. Then we specify our data type, so our MPI int, and then the operation that we want to perform here. So in this case, we just want to do a sum reduction. So we're adding up all of these partial results. But you can see there are a number of different operations that we can choose from here. You know, max, min, sum, product, and so on and so forth. And we can even specify um, our own kind of uh, reduction functions with this MPI op create. Okay, from there, right, we have our specification of root. So this is where our final answer is going to go. 
So rank zero here within this MPI com world communicator. So again, if we go ahead and take a look at the parameters, we are sending data from one location, our send buff into our receive buff, count total elements, right? Which is just one in this case of data type MPI int, right? Our operation is going to be a sum, right? We're doing some reduction. And our final answer is going to our root, which is zero in the MPI com world communicator. Okay. So after this call to MPI reduce, our rank zero will have our final result here. So what we'll do is just from rank zero or task ID zero, we'll print out this global result. Now in this case, you know, all we've done is, you know, have a distribution of values between one and one. So what we should see is just a final result of 1024 here, because we have an array of two to the 10 elements, which is just 1024. So we can start off by you know, compiling this and running this and making sure we get the right answer. So let's go ahead and compile the sum reduction and we'll use MPI C++, which is basically a, um, a, a wrapper on top of our G++ compiler driver. So we'll go ahead and pass in some reduction uh, and then we'll go ahead and create an executable of roughly the same name. So we'll go ahead and compile that. Then we can go ahead and run this with MPI uh, run and specify the number of processes to be something like eight, right? That'll work. Then we can go ahead and just run in, uh, the sum reduction. And what we see is we get the correct answer here of 1024, right? Uh, we distributed this work and partitioned our array across eight total processes. They all did a local accumulation of those results. Um, and, then, uh, and then we collected those partial results using that MPI reduce, right? Into our root uh, rank, right? Which was rank zero. And of course we could change the uh, our, our int distribution here to generate random numbers between say, you know, one and a hundred if we wanted to as well. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can go ahead and you know, recompile this with the same MPI C++ and we could run this as well, right? With this uh, MPI run. And you can see, right, we're sending out our data, right? This random data um, to our different processes and then collecting those partial results. Okay. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. It's an introduction to some of these uh, collective communication routines. So these just make it much easier whenever we have, um, you know, any kind of collective communication we want to do. Broadcasting a single piece of data to multiple different nodes, broadcasting parts of our data to different nodes, collecting partial results, and even performing operations right on those partial results. So in later videos, we'll see how we can practically uh, use this to implement something like Gaussian uh, elimination, just like we did with uh, our OpenMP last time. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.